November the 1st is here, and with that, the clocks have been turned back an hour in the UK for daylight saving time. I hope you've enjoyed Halloween and all its festivities this weekend. I have a question for you, though. Wow, what have you done so with cool. your carved pumpkin jack-o'-lantern this morning? The possibility is that it has, or probably will later today, arrive in your general waste rubbish bin, cast aside and all responsibility for its whereabouts waved away as swiftly as the lid of the bin closes. Halloween, like many modern versions of traditional holidays, has become the environment's worst nightmare. It poses so many questions for me. Is it just the biggest organised event of food waste? Another example of this is the La Tomatina Tomato Festival, which proclaims to be the world's biggest food fight. How has it become universally accepted to grow food for it to be deliberately wasted? It is even worse than the common daily incidences of food waste that occur globally. Shouldn't such resources as time, land and money be used to grow something people will eat? There is so much poverty. Luxuries such as having wealth of food are disproportionate and infuriatingly unbalanced and unfair i think we should have fun and add new traditions to halloween just so it is not as wasteful as it currently is so how can we make halloween less scary for the planet it is slowly becoming tradition within my family to visit a local pumpkin farm for our halloween pumpkin not only is this a fun outdoor activity for kids and big kids alike there Brian, is the chance that your you pumpkin has less carbon miles as it has been sourced locally so the photos and footage of this vlog are from my visit on the 17th of October on what was a pretty drizzly wet Sunday morning to Rutland Pumpkins. Just pumpkin patch picking with my sister. It's a glorious morning. <laughs> Makes me sick. <laughs> Quintessential English winter morning. Chucking it down. Never mind. Just grin and bear it, get on with it, pick your pumpkin and go! We went to their inaugural open last October and enjoyed ourselves so much that we vowed to go back in 2021 if they were running the event again. This year the farm had several varieties of pumpkin, Jilby Littles, Casparitas, Knuckleheads, turban squash and carving varieties such as Wicked and Early King. There were so many families there and it was so nice to see people join together and doing something that was so simple yet so fun and they were clearly enjoying themselves. There is also the bonus of supporting a local business and farm too. Before I share some tips and tricks I thought I'd bring you some pumpkin facts. The carving varieties of pumpkin that we are most familiar with have approximately 500 seeds each. Those seeds can provide a source of food for birds and small mammals, but I'll discuss that a little later. Pumpkins take around 120 days to grow and are usually planted between May and July. There are 45 varieties of pumpkin. They are grown on all continents except Antarctica, which is pretty clear as to why not, because it's so, so cold. Pumpkins are a fruit as they contain seeds, but as we class them as more of a savoury item, they are usually with the vegetables within our supermarkets and kind of greengrocers. Originally, jack-o'-lanterns were carved from root vegetables such as turnips or potatoes when all of All Hallows' Eve traditions began in Ireland. Now, I really don't want to be a party pooper here. And carving a Halloween pumpkin has been part of my family life since I can remember, since I was so, so small. But currently, our Halloween habits are wasteful and not sustainable. 95% of the pumpkins grown in the UK are used at Halloween, then discarded, creating tons and tons and tons of food waste that is frankly unnecessary and for the sake of entertainment rather than for us to eat. A similar figure of 80% of pumpkins in the US are grown specifically for October. All states have the facilities to grow their own pumpkin supply, but the five main contributors are California, Illinois, Indiana, Pennsylvania and Texas. I can't help thinking of what other food sources those resources could potentially be better purposed for instead of all that food potentially going to waste. With a little bit of know-how, pumpkin can become a full superfood that we all enjoy. They are low calorie, high in fibre, rich in vitamin C, have more potassium than bananas do and are a good resource of magnesium and iron, which is good for good heart health. And a lot of the pumpkin can be eaten by humans to prevent food waste. I think the best way to understand how you can make the best of your pumpkin is to understand its components so you can utilise it to the very best of its potential. Pumpkins can be broken down into five distinct parts. There's the stalk, the skin, the seeds, the guts 
and the flesh. So what can you do with your pumpkin? The seeds can be seasoned and roasted for a snack. You can also be find pumpkin seeds in bread and rolls too. So if you make your own bread or rolls at home, you could also put those in there. The flesh, guts and seeds can all be roasted, then pureed for all kinds of recipes. This includes biscuits that can be used as dog treats as well and soups, curries. The possibilities are absolutely endless if you look up some of the recipes. Alternatively, pumpkins can be a great source of food for animals or as an addition to a compost heap as they are 90% water. You can hang the pumpkin in a tree for small birds as a snack o lantern or separate the parts of the pumpkin to dispose of naturally so that animals don't get stuck inside or wedge the head within the top and be unable to dislodge it, so causing them harm. There's also the option to plant the seeds so that beautiful yellow pumpkin flowers will grow the following year. I really think that's a lovely option and that's something that uh, I'm going to give a go. As a complete last resort option, if you cannot sustainably waste your pumpkin, then please at least use your food waste caddy instead of your general waste bin where the food can be converted into a new resource at a plant that generates and processes food waste. So what other ways can you be eco-conscious at Halloween? Because there is a lot that we can all do to improve our habits around this holiday. Number one, have costume swaps or make costumes out of clothing you already have. DIY on this front. There are so many options and so many sorts of costumes that be inventive, be creative and use something that you already have or even borrow a costume on hire. Number two, make homemade decorations out of recycled materials or biodegradable materials. This includes fallen leaves. There's, they're everywhere right now. Why not make use of them? I also saw a lovely idea for children to make pumpkin shapes from their handprints. I'll include a photo in the video somewhere. Number three, have a reusable trick or treat bag. You could even customise it yourself. Number four, bring your own reusables instead of disposable party items. Number five, make your own festive goods such as cakes, crispy bars or sweets, for example, and avoid sweets wrapped in plastic within plastic and avoid single use disposable packaging that can be avoided. Let's all work towards being more hallow green rather than hallow mean, creating new traditions and means of having fun at Halloween and all other holidays throughout the years is a great way of evolving as a society and finding new ways to have fun. What's wrong with that? What's wrong with using our creativity and innovation to be more sustainable yet still have these traditions and still have fun? I will leave plenty of links in the description for further information on eco-conscious tips and tricks for Halloween. See you next time. Bye.